So I watched the Democratic debate last night, and I got to tell you, wow, if I were a big money Democratic donor right now, I would be freaking right to freak out. I would be, I would be freaking out. Can't say that any way. The two main frontrunners are looking really, really weak, kids. I mean, really weak. Uh, particularly Elizabeth Warren. As I've said in some of my last videos, now that it's clear that she is, in fact, probably the main frontrunner, the knives are going to come out for her. And come out last night, they did. And what's really important about what happened last night, okay, one of the main centerpieces of her campaign is Medicare for All. The two most basic questions to be asked about that. How are you going to pay for it and how are you going to get it enacted? Those are the two most basic questions if you're running on Medicare for All. And she couldn't answer either of them successfully. In a democratic debate, where there's people who are more empathetic to her point of view. She couldn't come up with good answers for those two most basic questions. How on earth is she going to run that in a national campaign against Donald Trump? She's not. She can't win like that. She can't win. And if perchance by some miracle of God that people hate Trump so much that, you know, she squeaks over the finish line, there's no way on earth she's ever going to get it enacted. As I said in one of my last videos, okay, Barack Obama, 208, he was, he was elected. He was a really popular president, really popular in 208. Very, very charismatic. People were talking about him as a revolutionary, transformational figure. He had strong majorities in both the House and the Senate, a, a near veto-proof majority in the Senate. I think they had 59 Democratic senators at that point. And he won in a near landslide, and he was extraordinarily popular, had the wind at his back, charismatic young president, and he had fawning media. And he could barely get o Obamacare over the finish line. Obamacare is not Medicare for all. It was a watered-down version. They, it was basically um, based off of Romney Care. It was probably what him and his advisors sat down and gamed it out, the most liberal possible thing that they could enact. They probably had a conversation. He, I'm sure Obama would have wanted universal health care, and they probably had a, a conversation with his advisors, and that was the most liberal thing they thought they could, 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 could turn into law. And they barely got it over the finish line. And it wound up costing him ginormously in the midterms. It was directly responsible for the rise of the Tea Party. He got famously shellacked in the 2010 midterms. You know, lost something like 50 to 60 seats in the House. He himself said he got shellacked. Why? Because they barely got Obamacare over the finish line. So if Barack Obama, with all of those circumstances, could barely get a much more watered-down version of a, of a health care bill across the finish line, there's no way on earth Elizabeth Warren, as a new president, who's just squeaked, if she, if she can win, I don't think she can win personally, because their answers on that were too bad. I mean, Trump will hammer on that 50 times a day, and so will every other Republican. If she can't answer in a Democratic primary, she can't answer it in front of the country. And she didn't have good answers for it at all. So she's going to be running on that, and if perchance, you know, people hate Trump so much that they vote her into office, she'll, she'll have just barely squeaked by. And the, the idea that she's going to radically transform the American health care system it's just not plausible. I just don't see it being enacted at all. I don't even see it coming close. So that presents a real problem. And that's why I said I still think Joe Biden is the most likely nominee of those two. Because as weak as Joe Biden is, he doesn't struggle with that central problem. Which brings us to Joe Biden. I mean, Joe Biden, he's got real weaknesses. And he kind of disappeared last night and he didn't make much of an impression one way or the other. So I see him as the most likely nominee because I can't imagine I'm the only one who noticed the problem with Elizabeth Warren's candidacy. And why I think it's the time is ripe for Bloomberg, John Kerry, or Hillary Clinton to jump in the race, if I were advising any of them, I'd tell them get in the race. If they don't, it's because they're afraid they can't beat Donald Trump. Because, because the Democratic Party right now is crying out for leadership. There are only two real leaders up there on that stage. That's Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I mean, I, I don't dispute the fact that they have a vision and they are leading. But where they want to take people, the country isn't ready to go. So even if either of them can, could win an election, which I sincerely doubt, 
I sincerely doubt Elizabeth Warren could win a national election based on what I saw last night. But even if she could, there's no way on earth she could enact any of the transformational stuff she wants to put into law. Almost none of it. She'll get 20% of it passed in the best case scenario. So that's how I see it in the Democratic Party right now. The Democrats are crying out for leadership. But Joe Biden has the right idea. You know, I'm going to be a steady hand on the tiller. I'm going to be a calm voice in difficult times. And, but he's, he, he's just, the age thing seems, he just seems too like a, like a kind of dotty old man. You know, now, if you listen to the media today, Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg really shined and they had their powerful moments. I mean, either of them could conceivably become if they rise enough in the polls, but where they are right now, they have to make a big, there has to be a big movement. And I don't foresee that happening based on last night. I don't think enough people watched it and I don't think it made that big of an impression. So the Democrats have a real problem. The two main front runners are looking really weak. Um, I think it's a perfect time for Bloomberg, John Kerry, Hillary Clinton to jump in the race. Any three of them could easily become the nominee if they jump in the race. Bloomberg is talking about it for real. And he's talking about it based on, ex he saw exactly what I saw with Elizabeth Warren. You know, it's not, she's, she is, her centerpiece of her campaign, she doesn't have good answers for. And that's in a Democratic primary. So I don't, I don't foresee how she's going to run on that in a national election. I really just don't see it. She's going to struggle with it. Now, the only saving grace, and I'm starting to doubt the validity of this, is, you know, the, 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 the media and Twitter and the left of the Democratic Party will have you believe that Trump is such an awful aberration monster of a human being that, you know, who they could run, they could run a ham sandwich against him. That that person will win. I don't buy it. I honestly don't buy it. I don't think Trump is so uh, so monumentally horrible to most of the people in this country as the media would have you believe or Twitter would have you believe. You know, anecdotal evidence. I got some evidence to back it up. I went to get my hair cut here in Southern California, mind you. I didn't go get my hair cut in Oklahoma. I got my hair cut here in Southern California, blue state of blue states, uh, just over the valley, just over the, over the canyons. We go into uh, really nice towns, actually. Westlake Village, Thousand Oaks. Love those places. Went and got my hair cut there. And the person cutting my hair, I asked her about what she thought of Donald Trump. And she was really vocal Really, like, I think he's great. I think what he's doing is awesome. You know, she all but said, build the wall, build the wall, <laughs> build the wall. That's just any old person. And I bet you a thousand dollars you want to you want to get a good sense of where the country's really at. Go to the gas station in your local town. Go to the gas station. Ask them what they think. Hey, you guys like Trump? And if they they'll probably feel you out a little. Go, can we trust this guy? And if they think they can trust you, they'll go. Yeah, actually, we really do like him. So he's nowhere near as wildly unpopular as Twitter would have you believe. I don't think you can run just anybody against him. I think he's going to be a strong candidate and he's going to be really, really hard to beat. He's got a force of nature personality, he dominates the media cycles, and he's got, you know, insults galore waiting. If Bloomberg or Hillary Clinton or John Kerry don't enter the race, I think it's because they, they sense that. They don't want to go up against Donald Trump. So I think he's going to be a lot more difficult to beat than most people think he is at this point. Um, Joe Biden, like I said, I think he's got a really good argument, but he's looking really weak. And Elizabeth Warren, it's a terrible, terrible, it's, it's not where the country's at right now. You know, her and Bernie Sanders are the only real leaders in the Democratic Party. But where they're trying to take the Democratic Party and take the nation, I don't sense the nation really is, is ready to go. So I don't see how this plays out in the Democrats' favor right now. The best case scenario for the Democrats would be John Kerry enters the race. John Kerry could win the nomination. John Kerry could beat Donald Trump based on the same, the same basic political argument that Joe Biden's trying to make. I'm just going to be a steady hand in difficult times. You know, that's, Trump is a crazy man and we need a steady, sane person to run things. I think that's a workable argument. Like I said, even if you're a big Trump supporter, he's still, Trumpian antics still freak, freak a lot of people out. They don't freak out people as much as the media would have you believe, but I still think they, they even Trump supporters get stressed out by some of the ways he acts. So we'll see. As, as I see it right now, Democrats are hurt, hurt in, hurting. That was, 
you know, Andrew Yang has got good ideas, but he didn't make enough of a difference to, to get any momentum. Other than that, Tulsi Gabbard didn't really do enough to, to give herself, to do herself any good. The two most likely, of the, of the people we saw, the two most likely nominees are still Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. And Elizabeth Warren has real vulnerabilities. So that's how I see it now, kids. That is all. Amen.